We begin this hour with the breaking news in Florida, the final hours before landfall of Hurricane Milton. This is a major category four, four storm off the west coast of Florida right now. Landfall is expected late tonight. Alerts are in place across almost the entire Florida peninsula, and there are new tropical storm watches and warnings for parts of Georgia and South Carolina. The effects from Milton already being felt. There has been a tornado outbreak ahead of the storm. This is one of those tornadoes that appears to have touched down near Interstate 75 in Broward County earlier today. Emergency officials are making their final preparations for this storm. It is already being called catastrophic and life-threatening. Milton is going to be the second major hurricane to hit the Sunshine State in just the last two weeks. Our NBC News teams are fanned out across the storm zone. We're going to check in with some of them in just a moment. But first, let's go to NBC New York meteorologist Matt Brickman, who's going to be with us for the full hour. Uh, Matt, we're getting closer to landfall, though it's still hours away. What's the latest track? Well, we're getting updates from the National Hurricane Center just about every hour now, and you're going to see these little wobbles in the path of the storm, in the track, 10 miles north, 10 miles south, and that's going to make a big difference for these communities in the peak storm surge that they see. So the areas just to the south of the center of the storm are likely going to see that 12 to 15 foot storm surge on the high end. Right now, the storm is anchored 120 miles southwest of Tampa with winds to 130 miles an hour and moving north east at 16 miles an hour. We have been seeing numerous tornadoes, over 10 confirmed tornadoes at this point in active tornado warnings spreading across much of the southern half of the state. There's a tornado watch for that part of Florida until 9 o'clock tonight. Here's the latest track. You can see the center of that cone passing through Sarasota. But if this goes a little bit farther to the north, Tampa Bay could see some of those higher storm surges a little bit farther south. And it's Port Charlotte that's a greater concern. Look at this, though. It stays as a hurricane clear across Florida, bringing with it these powerful winds. So in addition to ocean water being pushed on land with the storm surge, we have these high end winds, 80 to 100 miles an hour that can do damage to high rise buildings that otherwise would avoid some of that heavy rain and flooding down at lower levels. You can see all those strong storm surge numbers, 8 to 12 feet, even outside of the worst of it. This is still life-threatening, catastrophic storm surge from this storm. We'll continue to update it as it develops. Back All to right. You. Appreciate that. Meteorologist Matt Brickman with us. Thank you. Let's go now to our correspondents in Florida, starting with NBC News senior national correspondent Tom Yamas in Sarasota. Tom, we just heard from Matt. Sarasota could see 8 to 12 feet of storm surge and some of the worst of the storm surge tonight. What are you experiencing on the ground? Well, right now, it's still uh, very quiet here in Sarasota. A lot of people have evacuated near the water, especially where we are. Uh, you know, they're as ready as they can be for something like 8 to 12 feet of storm surge. But what these storms tend to do is they expose vulnerabilities, and that's probably what's going to happen right now. We're talking about a massive hurricane, nothing like Sarasota has seen, at least not in the last 100 years, if there is a landfall at least coming onto shore in the next 8 to 10 hours. Uh, around here, people have left. It's, you don't see a lot of people coming around. In fact, like three or four hours ago, we saw families leaving the hotel where we're staying at, trying to drive further west, or I should say east, to get away from this hurricane. Uh, places are boarded up. People have heeded the warnings, we hope. It, some barrier islands have even cut off the water to sort of send the signal that you cannot stay here because if you stay here, you will not survive to make sure people come out. There right now is a checkpoint to get to those barrier islands, and I call it a checkpoint, but it's really a barricade. It's uh, police cars and, and officers, and they will not let you get to those barrier islands, which is a good idea because it's just too dangerous. Uh, you know, it comes in waves, guys. Right now it is very calm here. An hour or two ago, there was he nonstop rain. There was very heavy wind gusts, but there's been a break in that, and that's going to be the story over the next 8 to 10 hours. But as you guys have been reporting since you guys came on the air, there is the threat of tornadoes, there's a threat of this hurricane, and there's a lot going on right now. People just have to be patient. They have, if, if they're staying put, they got to be very, very careful because emergency responders have told us they're not going to answer 911 calls until the conditions get to a point where they feel their officers are safe. So it's going to be a long night, it's going to be a long day, and in the morning we should have a better sense of what's happened here in this area. Tom, thank you. I want to turn to NBC News correspondent Stephanie Goss. She's just north of you in Tampa. So, Steph, I, I know Tampa. It's a big city. It's, it's an urban environment yeah. where people in high-rise buildings have, have people cleared out. 
Well, you know, Kate, how they how they do the evacuation zones, they've got a number of different kinds of zones. Zones A and B right now in Tampa have cleared out. We were in um, St. Petersburg earlier today. All of that, the area that was in a flood zone was, was cleared out. You know, it's interesting. You've got Tom. He's about 60 miles south of where I am right now. We're getting heavy rain right now and some pretty heavy wind gusts as, as well. But really what people here in this city are worried about and they're keeping close eye on those forecasts that we've been hearing from the Weather Service about the wobbles. Where is the storm going to go? And the reason that matters so much here in Tampa is that difference of really 10 miles this way, 10 miles that way could mean that the winds bring the water into Tampa Bay, creating that historic event, that once in a, a century storm. If it shifts to the south, then they will get less surge. However, there will still be a lot of surge in, in this city. You're still talking about as much as 8 to 12 feet. On top of that, as much as a foot of rain in Tampa. And that is why officials have been warning and continue to warn residents of this area to, to pay attention and listen to the warnings and get out if they need to. Listen to what the mayor had to say today. Wherever that storm surge comes, if it's 10 to 15 feet and people are trying to ride this out in single story structures, there's no place to go. And once the winds get up to uh, hurricane speed, there's nobody to come and get you. That's right, because the emergency workers aren't going to be going out when conditions get too dangerous. We have heard that in a number of the, of the shelters, people are arriving. In fact, some shelters are even at capacity. We also know that the major bridges in Tampa, and you've been here, you know, the bridges are really the lifeline getting back to various parts of this region. All of the major bridges are shut down. If you are trying to move around this city and in this area, it is very difficult right now, Kate. Yeah, and we have that picture of the bridge clearly subject to those strong winds you're talking about, Steph. And it, it really is sobering to hear these officials not mincing words, encouraging people to leave. So I want to bring in NBC News correspondent Dana Griffin. You're in Naples. Storm surge, also a major concern there. So what's the latest? Yeah. So right now we're feeling the wind gust pick up up to 50 miles per hour. So right now we're not experiencing rain, but earlier we were, especially when we were at the beach where guys, even just hours ago, you still had surfers in the water as these high waves were kicking up. I took a moment to chat with them about why they were in the water, especially as a tornado warning alert was going off and we were seeing lightning in the distance. Listen to part of our conversation. Is there ever a moment during the storm where you say, this is too dangerous, I'm leaving? Not until we get kicked off, that's about it. Well, this beach is technically closed, and we've heard law enforcement say people got to get out. Like, are you guys going to just stay anyway? It was just the beach patrol, so we figured we'd just get by it. Figured it was no problem, not the cops yet, so just try and enjoy the surf. And they said they were going to stay out for a couple of hours. That was a couple of hours ago. So hopefully they have left the area. We've seen several people show up to that beach and they say that they are safe. They're in high rises or they're farther inland. So they're not concerned. But just like other cities like Tampa, Sarasota, all of those coastal residents have been evacuated. And we believe most people have been heeding those warnings. It feels sort of like a ghost town. There's just this nice calm here in the city, not seeing too many cars on the roadway, which is a good sign. Hopefully people have left the area. But you talk about those tornadoes. We are in Collier County. This is the same county where those tornadoes touched down, at least one that was confirmed uh, rolling across I-75, about 26 miles from where we are. We left that beach, came to a garage further inland to try to protect ourselves. So we are watching. We can see the cloudy skies behind us. Uh, we are just kind of monitoring conditions as they come. Ladies. Yeah, we know you'll stay on it out there and hoping folks go home, including those surfers. Dana Griffin, yeah. thank you so much. And our thanks yeah. to Stephanie Gosk and Tom Yamas as well. Be sure to tune into Tom's show, Top Story, for special coverage of Hurricane Milton live from Florida. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming on NBC News Now. Let's go now to Public Information Officer uh, Josh Boatwright. He's in Pinellas County. Josh, thank you for being with us on an incredibly busy day. Um, I know you have mandatory evacuation orders in place right now for a lot of zones in the county. Uh, we've just been talking with our correspondents, and it does seem like most people have followed the orders. What are you seeing where, where you are? Yeah, we, we do have pretty high confidence that a lot of people are heeding the warnings. Uh, as you know, we had a, a deadly brush with a hurricane uh, just two weeks ago with Helene. Uh, and so I think people here uh, have had a taste of how 
how deadly and how dangerous, especially that storm surge can be. But uh, we're having to prepare for an even wider range of, of dangers this time with both the, the storm surge and the wind. So we do have mandatory evacuations that are affecting about uh, 500,000 of our residents are in those in those zones, but we are seeing a lot of the roads clear and we're hearing a lot of our public shelters are are well attended at this point. We saw plenty of room in those shelters, but a few of them have reached capacity. Uh, but we do have some confidence that uh, a lot of people are getting out of harm's way. Yeah, and Josh, we've talked a lot about the landscape, so high-rises, single-story homes, but we haven't touched as much on mobile homes. We know we're already seeing winds hitting 130 miles per hour. You have told people specifically to evacuate from all mobile homes. Walk us through the risks there. there there's huge risks there. Um, we haven't seen uh, sustained hurricane force winds like this. Uh, we've had a lot of storms brush near us. Uh, but not not this close. And, uh, you know, obviously it's still not clear whether the storm will come right at us or maybe just a little south of us, but we're going to get those hurricane force winds. And mobile homes really aren't built to be able to uh, withstand those kinds of winds. Uh, they, they're they very um, vulnerable to debris, uh, to being picked up by by high winds. And of course, there's the threat of tornadoes being spawned. So uh, we we did notice in the last couple of days, a lot of our mobile home parks were being cleared out, a lot of people going to shelters, and we were really glad to see that because uh, our residents in those places are especially vulnerable uh, in, in in a big storm like this. Yeah, we're looking at a shot on the screen of St. Petersburg, which I, I believe is in your county, right? That's Pinellas County. We've talked about debris from the last storm, from Helene, you mentioned it. It, it, it must be a major concern right now. Have you been able to clear we're looking at video. I'm not sure how old it is, but lots of debris on streets in Pinellas County. So it's been an all hands on deck effort the last few uh, the last few days to to clear a lot of that debris. I mean, the amount of debris that was generated by Helene is more than we've we've seen in in decades, and in maybe for for many of us uh, in a lifetime. So this is the kind of debris effort that would usually take weeks and weeks and weeks to. To deal with, but we uh, we had an influx of uh, state and federal partners coming in to try to get as much of that off the streets as possible. We know not all of it was able to get collected because that was just there's just too much of it out there. Uh, but uh, but there have been efforts all the way up until conditions got too uh, dangerous to to get as much of that out of the way as possible. Well, we hope so. Pinellas County Public Information Officer Josh Boatwright with us. Josh, stay safe. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And do stay with us. We've got more special coverage of Hurricane Milton on NBC News Daily right after this. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.